Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to discuss with you the release dates and also performance targets, plus also some of the technical aspects of AMD's upcoming products. Specifically, we'll focus primarily here on Warhol as well as RDNA 3, but we'll also throw in some other stuff too for good measure. And I think this is actually perfect timing, given, of course, we've seen so many shortages of different parts. It's actually led to people questioning, should you just wait and pick up, let's say, Warhol or RDNA 3 and just skip over this current generation? Well, let's start things out first of all with the GPU side of things, then we'll move on to CPU. I put out another video just recently that AMD's internal target for a uh, performance over RDNA 2 for RDNA 3 was two and a half times, or to put it in a better way perhaps, we're going to see the flagship uh, RX 7000 series outperform the 6900 XT by two and a half times. And of course, this is thanks to uh, multiple different reasons. Higher clock frequencies, the chiplet nature of the GPU having 160 compute units, as CoPT7 Kimi has already provided us information on, and also just IPC gains. So I then put out a subsequent video regarding NVIDIA's Lovelace architecture and the fact that AD102, uh, again, we had already learned from CoPT7 Kimi that we were seeing a 70% improvement in uh, the number of CUDA cores, but then reaching out to my various contacts, I found out that, yeah, AMD had actually not surprised NVIDIA with the two and a half times. And in fact, NVIDIA apparently were targeting very similar performance gains themselves for Lovelace. So this does bring me on to the new information. And I'd also quickly say that this is an article as well. So if you do prefer the written word, then of course, you know what to do. You can find it linked in the video description. So regarding the release date first for RDNA 3, it seems that it is not going to uh, release this year. So if you are considering picking up a GPU and you're on the fence, yeah, you're not gonna be uh, grabbing RDNA 3 this year. And I think that Lovelace is not launching this year either, although I'm less certain on that. I'm also less certain about a possible refresh of Ampere. Um, obviously we've been hearing a lot about the RTX 3080 Ti, um, and yeah, I'm not sure if there will be a uh, Ampere refresh, but to my knowledge anyway, Lovelace is not launching until next year, and it seems that RDNA 3 is targeting the first half of next year. One person told me that directly, that it's going to be the first half, another person implied it to me, and the other one just said it's definitely 2022. So either way, I'm expecting it's going to be uh, early next year-ish that we start to hear a lot more details about RDNA 3 and probably leaked benchmarks as well. Uh, I was also told that it's currently being bought up and it's actually doing really well in the labs. And yeah, um, again, the performance targets from another source seem to match perfectly what I've already been told. And NVIDIA actually uh, still seem to be having the advantage with DLSS or the upsampling technology. Although we'll get more into that in just a moment because that opens up an interesting kind of conversation. And yeah, I was also asking about the chiplet nature of the GPU. So <laughs> this one's quite interesting. So it's a chiplet based GPU, but it's also a monolithic based GPU. Um, and I know those two phrases completely and utterly contradict one another, but it basically depends on the GPU skew. I was told that Narve 31 and 32 are going to be chiplet based. We'll get more into the breakdown in just a moment. Whereas Narve 33 is going to be monolithic in nature, which I have to admit did raise an eyebrow, but my source has been really accurate in the past and they seem pretty darn certain about this. I'll be very curious to see how the I.O. works on that because my initial assumption was that Narve 33 would just basically be chiplet based, just kind of like we see with, let's say, I don't know, like a 5600X, for example, you know, how you've got, you know, one chiplet and that's it. That's kind of how I expected Narve 33 to be based on, but no, apparently not. It's going to be monolithic, which means, of course, I.O. and everything else is going to be thrown together on the same die. I'm also interested to see how many CU that would be. Is it going to be fewer than 80? Um, I wonder if it's going to be 64, and then obviously that's cut down depending on the skew. 
Again, I'm just guessing here, I don't know that for certain, but I was told that Narve 33 is definitely uh, monolithic, which again brings us to mo uh, the chiplet-based architecture, which is Narve 31 and 32. Strictly speaking on Narve 31, I was told that there are two types of die. The first is, as you would expect, the die which houses the compute units. February 7, Kimi has already confirmed that there's 160 compute units, and I was told that this is most likely accurate. One of my sources actually seemed to have some doubts whether it was only two chiplets for the compute. They seem to imply it might be four. However, I'm pretty certain that that information is incorrect and it is actually only two chiplets, each housing, as you would guess, 80 compute units, so 80 times two. Very complicated math, <laughs> math for 160. And then obviously there's another die and this actually is going to be purely for IO. So it's gonna handle IO mostly I don't think there's anything else that it does, at least according to what I know so far, which also means we can, whoop! That was a terrible sound effect. Anyway, um, yeah, so we can throw out the MLA pattern that has recently been discovered. I was spitballing that maybe this was possibly included for RDNA 3, but from what I can gather, that's not the case. It is not going to be included in RDNA 3. So there's only two, there's the chiplets themselves for the you know cu and whatever else is included on them and then there's the second type which is again io die which of course will facilitate communication with let's say pcie bus and memory and you know whatever else so basically whatever amd solution is for upsampling which of course they've somewhat detailed already that it's going to have that you know upsampling technology it's going to remain well, not using the MLA pattern anyway. I'm told that it's going to be better for RDNA3. That's what one of my sources told me than RDNA2. However, it still seems, from what I can gather so far, although it's still really early, NVIDIA still seems like they're going to have the advantage there with DLSS. And to my knowledge, they're going to be pushing that really heavily over the next couple of, uh, you know, over the next generation at least, like for Ampere and probably as well for Lovelace. But if you want more information on that, you can check out my previous video where I also detail some of Intel XE stuff. And I've actually got more info on Intel XE, but I'm trying to kind of clarify a few points before I put out like a dedicated Intel XE video. So for now, I'll kind of leave that as is. But I was also told that RDNA 4 is also coming up nicely as well. It's still really early days. It is not silicon at the moment. We're not talking like, you know, silicon engineering samples or anything close to that. However, it is coming on rather nicely. And I had it hinted by uh, one source that there are some differences in the uh, chiplet nature with how it's put together versus RDNA 3. However, it's still really early for me to talk about that yet. So I'm not going to add any more details for RDNA 4 um, because, yeah, of, of multiple reasons. But uh, long story short, RDNA, uh, just quick reminder, RDNA 3 launches next year. It's going to be chiplet-based, 160 compute units. There's going to be higher clock frequencies, better IPC, ray tracing performance, even better than what we've already got. It's going to be closer to what NVIDIA have. And RDNA uh, 3's higher-end SKUs, so Narve 33 and 32, they will be chiplet. Narve 33 will be monolithic. So I think that just about covers everything there. So CDNA 2 also launches this year as well, to my knowledge. So again, this year, not next year for CDNA 2. However, um, I have less solid information about CDNA 2 in terms of the architectural changes. So I've only had one source kind of give me some information regarding it. So I'm going to leave that alone for now, as unless I can get multiple people telling me information on that, I kind of want to just leave it as is. Moving now on to the uh, CPU side of things, uh, let's talk about Warhol. So when I was first of all leaking a lot of the Ryzen 5000 stuff, I had originally been taught, well, I guess back then it was just known as Zen 3 or Ryzen 4000. This is before AMD decided to name it Ryzen 5000. I've been told that Zen 3 would definitely be retaining 16 cores, 32 threads for the high end. And there was a couple of reasons for this. The first is that Intel were just not competitive. They were about as competitive as an ant versus someone shooting it with a laser beam, you know, or more accurately anyway, a magnifying glass in the sun. They just weren't competitive enough in the desktop space. The second reason is that, yeah, DDR4. 
And obviously you can have like 4 billion cores, but if you're only feeding it with DDR4, you know, 3200 or whatever on a dual channel configuration, it doesn't matter how good your cache system is, there's going to be limitations. We've all seen how well Zen loves, or how well, excuse me, Zen does with uh, faster memory. And if you're obviously going to be holding back, like let's say 24 cores or 32 cores or whatever, um, it's just, yeah, it, it's just, there's just no point in doing it. So, to my knowledge, Warhol is still going to be returning 16 cores, 32 threads. And it is going to le uh, launch this year. I was told it's going to be Q4. And the only um, thing I will say is that this does match a leaked roadmap we've seen. The, re the leaked roadmap, I be believe it was Miwu who first leaked the roadmap. Uh, that roadmap said it was going to be 2021, and I'm told it's going to be Q4 that we see this release. So it's going to be about a year after, of course, Zen 3. Now, the interesting thing about the roadmap is it states that it's PCIe 4, which seems to imply that it's going to be AM4 based. The only official statement from AMD so far is that the 400 series boards will not support any processors above Zen 3. So in short, anything released after Zen 3, you will not be able to plonk into a 400 series board. Or yeah, so basically Ryzen 5000 is the end of the line for the 400 series. And yeah, the weird thing is that I'm not able to get any actual information so far, solid information anyway, whether we're looking at AM4 or AM5. I'm leaning towards this being AM4 based. Two of my sources have told me it's AM4. However, one person, was adamant for quite a while it was AM5, but I'm believing that that's probably not the case, not least of which because my newer sources have told me it's AM4 based, and also with the leaked roadmap as well, it's almost certainly uh, AM4 based. So yeah, still not 100%, but I believe that um, Warhol is AM4 based, but that would possibly mean that Intel do have the IO advantage given older Lake, but Again, we'll have to wait and see on that one. I'm also told don't expect anything huge with Warhol in terms of IPC gains or anything like that. It's not staggering. Warhol is going to be modest IPC gains, you know, think, you know, mid single digits, but there is also a small clock frequency bump as well. So Warhol is going to be nice. It's going to help AMD fight off Alder Lake for gaming performance and that type of thing. Obviously, we don't really know how Alder Lake will do just because of the big slash small core nature of it. Like, I have no idea how the hell that's going to work. It's going to be really interesting to test out different applications and how they scale uh, across multiple different cores there, especially given Alder Lake. From what we understand anyway, the small cores do not have hyper-threading slash SMT. It's only the big cores. As we know, there are two different architectures essentially anyway. But I don't want to get too far into that because that will be a whole can of worms. Uh, yeah, so... Warhol will launch uh, this year, Q4. It's going to be a modest refresh, small IPC gains, a couple of tweaks here and there, and higher clock frequencies. But core counts and everything else remain the same. What does that mean for you? Well, yeah, I mean, I would probably, if if you need a processor now, and you know, you're picking up like a 5950X or whatever, I would probably say just go for it. You're not going to miss out on a whole thing. It's not going to be huge. It's not going to be like Zen 1 to Zen 2. It's going to be more like Zen to Zen Plus, I guess. Maybe a little better than Zen Plus in terms of the jump. Maybe a little. Again, you're going to see high clock frequencies and stuff, but it's not going to be, you know, a complete revelation. You're not going to be like, oh my god, this is amazing as an upgrade. However, I was also given a tiny bit of information about Zen 4. And yeah, Zen 4 is kind of an interesting one. Because the I.O. obviously on Zen 4 is massively better. It's massively improved. It's got DDR5 support for a start and also, you know, faster PCIe and all of that stuff. So that alone, you can imagine just in terms of I.O., particularly when you're dealing with, like, data-heavy applications, you can imagine that the extra, you know, data throughput on the memory is going to help a lot. Um, for the data center, I was told that Genoa is actually pretty damn impressive. Um... And I had someone else tell me that there was definitely more cores with Genoa. I don't know the exact core count, um, but it was implied to be 96. So 
I'm guessing that that is true, and that does seem to tally with other leaks that have happened in the past, 96 cores. I don't think it's 128, so I think it's 96. Either way, I was told that there are more cores for Genoa. And yeah, the interesting thing as well, I was told that IPC isn't the only thing with Genoa. There's like a, a lot of different moving parts for Genoa. Of course, the IO, as I mentioned, is going to be pretty damn massive. The increase in core count and all this other stuff. So Genoa is going to be pretty damn bit, uh, pretty damn huge for uh, AMD. And another really interesting thing too is that as for uh, IPC gains, I was told that they're going to be in line with what we've seen before, which of course matches AMD's own statements. So I'm guessing around 20-ish percent. Although of course, when it comes to IPC, it's a very difficult thing to measure because different applications are going to use the CPU in different ways. Um, but I was, it seems like we're going to be looking at like an average of the low 20%, possibly more, possibly less, but obviously there are going to be other advantages anyway, like higher clock frequencies. And yeah, AMD are basically going to be kicking ass over the next uh, year or two. And I think that makes sense, honestly. RDNA 3 is going to be a really important architecture for AMD, just in terms of scalability and obviously competing on the high end, like the bleeding edge. Um, and I'll be very curious to see how it all comes to pass, especially given Intel, of course, are, well, just making pretty big sweeping changes to their CPUs and NVIDIA obviously are not exactly clean, uh, keen to lose the, you know, their competitive edge on gaming. And again, I just want to go back to what I was saying earlier. NVIDIA seemed to be wanting to basically DLSS everything. I mean, <laughs> at this point, I'm pretty sure we're going to see DLSS with bloody Windows fonts. Of course, I'm slightly exaggerating, but you get my point. Like, DLSS is going to be pushed really heavily with game developers. And obviously, this is not in isolation. AMD will be doing much of the same thing. They've got their own teams which help uh, developers, of course, optimize for their own hardware. So, in the next couple of years are going to be really interesting, particularly when you consider the next generation consoles all use RDNA. And... Yeah, you've got to imagine that the experience the developers have for RDNA in the consoles is going to benefit them at least to a degree with the desktop, especially with the Xbox, given it uses DirectX. So DX12, of course, basically you've got very similar API, very similar development environment, you know, it's boiling things down to a very simple form for the desktop as well as the PC, and of course, very similar feature set. So it'll be really interesting to see exactly what we can expect out of RDNA 3 as developers become more, you know, acutely aware of how to squeeze the most out of the hardware anyway. Um, with that said, of course, it's still really early days and uh, it's all going to be coming down to pricing. And uh, yeah, that's honestly where I think it's all at at the moment. And I wouldn't be surprised if the companies do raise their prices a little bit, given obviously with all of the if NVIDIA, for example, had their cards priced more expensively, let's say the RTX 3080, if they had been a little more expensive, they may have actually, ironically enough, sold out slightly slower, and maybe we wouldn't have had these shortage situations, or at least maybe that's how some of these companies are, you know, kind of processing this. So I wouldn't be surprised if the next-gen cards are more expensive. Hopefully that's not true, and you know, hopefully that's a load of crap, and that doesn't happen, because that would suck. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I think that's just about it for this particular video. If you do want more info, you can of course click the link again in the video description for the article. But for now, I think that's a good place to call it. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, of course, leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you want more information because I will be getting more info over the next couple of months as obviously the architecture has come closer to launch. And yeah, with that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.